Hi, this is Russ Dolliger from Science Club. I want to go with the formation of barium sulfate. Let's look at this. So we've got barium ion, we've got sulfate ion using the ionic bond disc model, and you can see it sticks together. Isn't that cool? Right? So you can see, look, barium sulfate. Now, let's go over that, how this works, okay? So we're going to do that. We're going to use the ion flashcard. So here are the ion flashcards. We have them. They're available from Amazon right now. It's got 4.9 stars and 34 reviews. Doing well. Now, let's look at the actual cards, all right? We'll put this in the center here. So if we start off with barium, barium is going to lose two electrons from the 6s orbital to get a charge of plus two. It ends up being like xenon. Nitrate is a nitrogen and three oxygens strung together in this sort of flat circular arrangement, sort of like a record, and it's got a or CD player, or a CD, and it's a trigonal planar, it's called. It's got three different versions, and it goes in between these three. That's called resonance. Now, you notice this is plus two, and that's minus one. That does not add up to zero. It wants to add up to zero. So we have a problem here. And now, on the other hand, if we have potassium and sulfate, we're going to have K plus. It loses one electron to be like argon. And sulfate is got a sulfur and four oxygens strung together in a tetrahedral arrangement. Okay? This has got a charge of minus two, and that's got a charge of plus one. Again, so now we're going to have barium nitrate and potassium sulfate, and you can see that's an unbalanced reaction. Using the ionic bond disk model, it makes it very much easier to understand this. So now, if we have a we have potassium and nitrate ions, and if we have these nitrates hooked on to the barium, oh look at that! We've got look at that. There's two pluses and two minuses. Boom! Now it's balanced. Okay, it adds up to zero. And in a similar way, the sulfates hook onto the potassiums here. That's balanced. So now we would end up with a balanced equation. We have one of the potassium sulfate with two potassium ions, and we have the barium nitrate. Now, this is the reactant side of the equation, the reactant side. Now, when these are in the water, they're going to come apart. Anything that's got a potassium ion, any alkali metal, sodium, potassium, lithium, rubidium, cesium, any of those is going to come apart in water. Okay? Okay? So these are going to come apart. And they're floating around. In the same way, anything with the nitrates is going to come apart. So all the nitrates are coming off. And again, these things are floating around, floating around, floating around. And every now and again, like in trillions of a second, the barium will connect up with the sulfur, the sulfate that is. Oops, let me hook this together a little nicer. Okay, so here we go. And... And, ah, oh, come on. Don't be stubborn. There we go. <laughs> uh, there we go. Barium sulfate. <laughs> it was stubborn. Didn't want to go together. But now that it's together, it's not coming apart. It hates to be in the water. You see, these ions are so it's surrounded by water molecules. And they prefer to be surrounded by water molecules more than they with each other, except barium sulfate. The barium likes to be with the sulfate. It hates to be in the water. Okay? So, now... Meanwhile, the potassium and the nitrates are coming together and coming off and going together. But now we have the product side of the equation. Two potassium nitrates and one barium sulfate. That's the product side. So now we have a balanced equation. Do you see that? Now we have a balanced equation. Now, there's another way of looking at this, which is called the complete ionic equation. And that's the actual ion so floating around. Well, this one, the barium sulfate, it's not coming apart. That's it. It's done. Okay? But the potassium nitrate, they're going on, coming off, going on, coming off. And so we can talk about the ions that are in the solution. Well, there's two potassium ions and there's two nitrate ions. And you notice that the potassiums were in the solution before and they're in the after. They're in the reactant side, they're in the product side. The same thing for the nitrate. They're on the reactant side, they're in the product side. Those are called spectator ions. You can see that with the red arrows here. They don't do anything. They're just watching. Looky loose, okay? They're not doing anything. The real thing is happening between the barium and the sulfate. And so there's a special equation for that. It's called the net ionic equation. So if we do that, then we're going to have just the stuff to make barium sulfate. And so we have a barium ion. Let's put it on that side, barium ion. We have a sulfate ion. And they go together. And let's see if it's going to be, ah, uh, it's behaving better now. You see? So we have barium and we have sulfate. 
It comes together, that's your net ionic equation. Ionic bond disk model and the flashcards help a lot. So net ionic bonding disk model is a brand new model. It's got a couple of patents pending and this really helps. Students love it. It works really well. And I guarantee this is going to reduce your frustration. Students are going to learn faster and it's going to make your life so much easier. I really think you're going to like it. We already have schools that are buying it, getting purchase orders for it, pre-ordering it, and so on. This is going to help your life a lot. It'll make your day much easier. Thank you very much for letting me help you.